So we might as well get started. I see we have a couple of folks that are trickling in. So hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining tonight. My name is Irina Keefe. I'm the Sustainability Director with the City of Beverly. And um, we appreciate you taking the time tonight to, as we say, talk trash or um, really the ways that we can reduce our solid waste in Beverly. I'm going to share my screen and we can um, walk through a presentation that should take about 20 minutes or so about recycling, composting, and the kind of general state of um, waste reduction in the city of Beverly. So we're fortunate tonight to be joined by um, a few members of our Beverly um, Waste Reduction Committee. I see Sue Higgins and Nancy Dillon. If you either of you want to say hi and give a little plug for the Waste Reduction Committee. I, I'd be happy to say something. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, thank you, Irina. So yeah, so Nancy and I are members of the Waste Reduction Committee, and our committee is a municipal committee with members appointed by the mayor. We serve in an advisory and consulting capacity for the mayor, city council, other city departments, um, and the general public on matters related to waste reduction, recycling, and composting. Our focus is largely education and outreach. Uh, we work very hard to try to stay up to date on what's happening in the industry, in the city, in the, the region, um, so that we can fulfill that role of education and outreach. Uh, and when we can, we, we are active in community events, which gets us out there talking to people. Uh, some of the ones that we've done over the past regularly include Lobster Fest, which is a very fun and a very successful zero waste event that we do every year at homecoming and we've done many um, electronics collection events styrofoam events and um, many other things so we're here as a resource and we're very happy to be here tonight to um, listen to this presentation and help answer questions and give some input along the way Thank you, Sue. And just a plug for the two vacant seats that are on the committee. So anyone who is interested in this material and interested in fighting the good fight of waste reduction in Beverly um, should reach out to Sue to possibly get involved. Thank and, you. Uh, so that's kind of one expert in the field that we're very lucky to have with us. And then Gail is the other, who is our um, municipal assistance coordinator from the state. Do you want to say hi? Sure. I'm Gail Guerin. I'm the municipal assistance coordinator for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. Um, I serve um, the North Shore of Massachusetts with 39 communities, including Beverly. And I'm here to answer any questions that you might have about waste reduction in Massachusetts. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Gail. And so for tonight, um, we've gone through some introductions. What we're going to do is kind of quickly go through um, some updates for the new waste contract that we have with our uh, trash hauler, JRM and then kind of go through some best practices and do's and don'ts of recycling, some exciting new composting programs that we've got, and then just some resources that you can use in your daily life. Um, I know this is a very important topic that's typically hidden from our daily life. You know, oftentimes we're, when we go to the store, we go to a restaurant, we're handed layers of materials that really only serve us for you know, 15 seconds at a time. It's a takeout container that's nested inside a paper bag that's nested inside a plastic bag and handed over to us. And um, we often don't think you know, twice about how to dispose of those items once, we, once they serve us for that really short period of time. So it really does mean a lot for you to be here and to kind of take the time out of your day to learn um, the kind of context around our community's waste problems. And once you start to notice all of those little you know, opportunities of waste and waste reduction, it's kind of easy to add them up and understand just how much single use stuff comes into our life, how much we consume and discard as a society. So. I am hoping that tonight you'll leave with some um, opportunities to uh, kind of nudge your family, your friends, your neighbors to become more conscious consumers um, and also just kind of stronger stewards of our uh, resources. So with that, um, I will start by sharing some background information about our new contract. Um, so we ended up having a really, really good deal for the last contract. Um, and we all anticipated that the costs would go up this time around. We renewed our five-year contract with JRM. Um, that'll bring us to 2026. And we can just kind of walk through a few of those changes. Um, essentially, what this means for you as a resident of Beverly is not a lot. Your trash fee remains the same. Um, your, there's no change in service. Your pickup day is the same. 
Um, the only difference is that the yard waste facility, the composting facility is open for more hours, um, for more days of the week. So um, part of the reason why we are seeing increased costs, as you can see here, is, um, are that the trash hauler has started to experience longer wait times at the transfer station. They're having workforce issues, not enough drivers. Um, we're seeing that take place across all the industries, um, especially in the context of COVID. So some of those higher costs were passed down to us. Um, and then on the recycling front, this is a new fee. Recycling used to be free, uh, but then 20, free for us, free for the municipality. And um, typically what would happen is the um, hauler would accept all of our materials for free, sort them, sell them on the back end, and that's how they found value and created value out of um, out of our recycling. So when um, trying to stop accepting our recycling, we kind of changed the standards of what they would expect accept from us, and our recycling exports were too contaminated. So our facilities weren't really able to separate out contamination to such a fine degree. Um, so. All of a sudden, we're paying $60 a ton. This is still cheaper than the cost of a ton of trash. So we do want to make sure that our recycling um, is as clean as it can be. Otherwise, it's going to be treated just as trash and we'll end up paying that higher fee. Arena, can I add something to that? Please. Yes, Mine? Please. So I just wanted to add the perspective that although this is an increased cost for us, which it clearly is, um, and we, we had free recycling before. We've never really had free recycling. Recycling has always had a cost to it. There's always a cost to collect it and process it. It's just kind of been blended in. And so, yes, our costs are higher, but these costs are reasonable in terms of, you know, broadly, if you look at what other municipalities are paying and what's being charged even on like a commercial institutional basis, these are, are in line in perhaps even, you know, on the lower end of um, some of the costs that we're seeing out there. So it's an increase, but I, I feel like this is still a, a, a pretty good deal that the city has in terms of pricing. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there for perspective. Yeah, thank you. So it is a good deal, especially since we are not being charged with our recycling contamination. So some other municipalities are seeing a price. If the contamination is over a certain threshold, then you're going to be charged for that also. So, so, and then just on our performance overall, as you can see in the chart, our trash tonnage hasn't changed a lot over time. Uh, we have seen a slight increase in recycling in 2020, but 2020 has been kind of an outlier year for many reasons. Um, we know that people are using more single use containers, you think about the PPE that's being thrown out, et cetera. So um, what that 30% diversion rate um, refers to here is how much is removed from the trash stream. So this is kind of typically uh, what you're thinking of as recycled, recycling. Um, and this household diversion rate here on the right just shows um, you know, how we stack up against all the other communities that are around us. And you know, we're not the worst out there, but there's certainly room for us to improve. That's for uh, disposal and for diversion. And Sue and Gail, feel free to jump in whenever you wish. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we have a lot of room for an improvement and these are great communities to, for comparison, uh, particularly in Salem, you know, where Salem's our neighbor next door um, in Gloucester, you know, we have a lot of similarities when we look at these, these other communities and um, we, we should be working to achieve those higher diversion rates and the lower disposal rates that we see what some of these other communities have. It kind of shows us the potential that's out there for us. And I think we should always keep that in mind and set our sights at achieving what I think is achievable. Yes, we can aim to be the natives of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so we completed the climate action planning process at the end of June. Uh, one of the important focus areas for us was solid waste. And um, we are aligned with the state in our goal to achieve this 30% disposal reduction by the year 2030. Um, they also have a goal of 90% reduction by 2050. So that's going to kind of require that all of us are becoming um, conscious consumers, that we're advocating for bills, for legislation that's going to do uh, things, move some of the responsibility from residents, from consumers, onto um, the producers that are making the packaging. And this presentation is you know, part of an ongoing educational campaign that we'll be ramping up over time. Um, we know this stuff can get really complicated. So it's helpful to have exposure kind of over and over to these concepts. 
Um, just a note on policy here, um, we're expecting this to this new ban to pass um, starting maybe next year, maybe the year afterwards um, with some technical assistance from the state. Um, now there is a long list of items that are banned from the waste stream that includes cardboard and, ga and glass as some of the most kind of fundamental materials, which effectively means that it's, it's illegal for anyone to not be recycling these items, though it can be truly challenging for the state and for municipalities to enforce. Um, so, yep. and Arena, I wanted to update you on that. Um, these were voted in last Friday and they will be going into effect of November 1st, 2022. Great news. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit about what that rollout might look like? Um, there will probably be, you know, plenty of time for municipalities to get these in place um, where it's going into effect next November you'll probably have about a year um, of education and um, hopefully uh, there, there could be some uh, assistance from the state. We're still trying to determine that. So, um, but you will definitely have time to um, put programs in place um, once this gets, you know, final approval, no, no final implementation, it's approved. So implementation, November 1st, 2022. Okay. Sue? Yeah, and I think this is something worth watching closely. My understanding is that, um, the, and Gail can perhaps correct me, but I think this makes us for mattresses. I think it makes Massachusetts the first state to actually impose a ban on mattresses before there is a extended producer responsibility kind of framework in place where other states like Connecticut, California have done things to have a program in place where you buy a mattress, you pay a charge up front, which allows you to dispose of it at no cost at the end. So um, Massachusetts is being very aggressive in kind of mandating the recycling of it before something like that is in place. I think as a community, we should be watching um, those EPR legislative activities and supporting them where we can to help um, make this mandatory recycling program as successful as possible. So moving on to recycling, uh, other forms of recycling, uh, we hear sometimes the question of, should I even bother? We hear all just turns into trash anyway. Um, we've seen some news articles, there was an expose out of the New York Times that um, suggested a lot of what we put in the recycling bin doesn't get recycled. Um, regardless, our answer stays the same. Yes, it is worthwhile to recycle. Yes, please recycle. Uh, these are some photos from a recycling audit that we had taken in March of this year, uh, where we learned that 25% of, our, of, our, uh, of this particular load um, was contaminated. And in general, month to month, the data that we receive in Beverly is that we have between a 25%, 30% contamination rate. Um, and in this sample, you can kind of see if you take a close look at this photo, some things that we know are not allowed. We see a big trash, white trash bag. There might be some bags that are filled with what could be recyclable materials, but might not be. Um, just a lot of unknowns there. So the way this um, audit worked was they took a load from downtown Beverly dumped it out, weighed it, dumped it out, pulled out everything that was considered contamination, weighed that, and that's how we received this rate. Um, so, you know, ultimately, um, and this is, by the way, at our facility, the Greenworks facility in Saugus off Route 1. So, yes, you know, it has become harder to recycle a lot of items, um, but we know that things like milk jugs, things like cardboard still have a really strong market. So, ultimately, we need to be cleaner. Uh, we need to put in the bin just sort of a limited list of items. Uh, I know there's a lot of optimistic recycling out there, a lot of wishful thinking, wishful recycling, and that really doesn't help because these facilities are meant for cardboard, paper, metal, glass, plastic, the categories that you see here, um, and everything else is trash. So this is a initiative led by this, run by the state Recycle Smart that gives really straightforward education around what can and cannot go in the recycling bin. So generally, you're safe with bottles, jars, containers, paper, cardboard. And I think, oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead, please. I just was going to say back on your photo of the Greenworks facility and the contamination, um, or maybe even the next one, it's important for people to know that 
Like you talked about a plastic bag, a trash bag. Sometimes people think that, well, if I put all my recycling, all my bottles and cans and containers in that plastic bag, it contains it, it won't blow around on the street. But when that gets to JRM, even if it's full of perfectly clean, all good recyclables, that entire bag gets pulled as contamination. They do not have the resources or equipment to open the bag, remove the plastic and recover those recyclables. By the same token, if somebody has a cardboard box and they don't flatten it, they leave all the packing materials in the box, like styrofoam, plastic, what, whatever else might be in there, that box gets pulled as trash. So not only is there contamination, but that really good valuable cardboard does not get recovered and recycled. The whole thing gets pulled as trash. So it's the items, making sure we're putting the right items in, but it's also being careful and making sure we're preparing them properly and setting them out properly. Yeah, I would also add too, if you're putting your um, recycling in a plastic trash bag, that's contributing to recycling contamination as well. Um, that plastic bag can get end up st stuck in machinery at the MRF and it might need to close down to get that out of the machinery. And that also poses a hazard to the workers who work there. Surprising items that can go in the recycling. There's been some back and forth on the rules on this, but yes, you can recycle your pizza boxes, even if there's a little bit of grease on them. It's acceptable. It's nothing that the um, facilities can't handle. Um, other things are aluminum containers. Some food containers can be recycled, some cannot. Aluminum is still valuable. So as long as you clean it out, I know there's some food that can get stuck along the ridges, but if it's cleaned out, you can put it in your recycling bin. Uh, plastic cups, like a coffee cup you get at Starb Starbucks, um, can be recycled. You just need to pull off that straw and that lid. So moving on to some of the big offenders. Um, this, again, is, is you may have seen it before. It may have come to your house as a mailer. Um, but as Gail mentioned, some of these things like these stretchy film materials, hoses, wires, they can get stuck in the sorting, uh, sorting equipment and put the workers at risk. Um, we already covered some of these kind of high ticket items of bagging, recycling, um, eating plastic bags, and you really don't want a dirty food container. So these are just some examples of what we see most, most often um, in the recycling that doesn't belong there. For food containers, we covered cartons, things like broth containers, milk cartons, juice boxes. Um, those are all lined with different materials. It's not a paper product. It's not plastic either. That belongs in the trash, unfortunately. And Amazon packages can be really confusing because they often have a symbol that suggests it's recycling. But if you read the fine print, it's only at very specific facilities and um, cannot be taken in by a municipal um, sort of. Film plastic can be returned to some stores. So if you can pull it and it stretches, that's a really good rule of thumb that came from Sue. Thank you. Uh, and that can be returned to the grocery store um, or there's some other collection bins at like Subaru nearby. So these black plastic containers are often used for takeout. And while they are better than styrofoam in some ways, the black color of that um, container can't get picked up by the optic sorter, optic sorter. So it is not treated as recycling. Um, so the Recyclopedia is a resource that's available on our website if you go to the trash and recycling page um, and through Recycle Smart. If you're, you know, having questions about whether something can or cannot go in your recycling bin, you can just search for an item. So if you search for the term batteries, it'll show you what you can do with a nine volt, what you can do with a, you know, D battery. Those are, those in particular, double A's, triple A's are safe to go in your trash bin. But then there are certain other types of batteries like rechargeables or um, the little, the little disc batteries that um, it's a special handling and can't go in the trash bin. So when in doubt, try the recyclopedia. And if there's a kind of strange material that's not covered in the kind of basics of your day-to-day, -day, like your electronics or your hazardous waste, um, you can choose the Beyond the Bin Recycling Directory. And what it might do is show you locations, actual storefronts that will accept those items and break them down and um, recycle what they can or reuse what they can from, let's say, a, an old you know, crushed up laptop or cell phone. So um, moving on to textile recycling, 
Uh, we do have these bins here. There's a couple different types around town. There's at least a textile bin at every Beverly Public School in the parking lot, um, as well as some churches nearby, some stores, and 95% um, of all textiles can be recycled or reused. Uh, they, they sometimes find new life as a playground surface. They'll tear apart your old sneakers and some of the rubber will go into a new playground surface. Um, a lot of them are used as rags to clean up um, grease and oils at auto shops or paint shops. And then items in good condition might be sent to Guatemala or to Chile is where our uh, textiles end up going sometimes to be resold in retail. So beyond clothes, you can, as I mentioned, recycle footwear. So in any condition, it could be your sandals, your boots, your slippers. Those can be put in the bin once they're bagged and in a dry condition. Same with belts, hats, scarves, etc., and your uh, traditional linens. But the first resource that we want to send you to if your item is in good condition instead of putting it in this um, collection bin is to either drop them off for donation at a place like Beverly Bootstraps or Savers um, or consider consigning them. We have a really a great few shops in Beverly for at least women's clothing consignment. These are some photos that were taken at Beverly High School um, of these, I think this is similarly wishful donation or optimistic donations where people are thinking that maybe these items that they no longer have use for in their homes could be used by a different family. So they're, you know, piling up a bunch of maybe in good condition items at the textile bin. But the people who pick this up are textile recyclers. And so all they're looking for are the textiles. So everything else that's left here is trash and will be treated as trash. It's treated as dumping actually, which is not legal. Um, so anything that has to be picked up separately by a trash hauler, by a trash packer, um, has to be recharged for, and that comes out of the, the donations that are given to the school PTOs. But please don't do it. Yeah. Marina, I did want to mention that there are some nonprofits out there that if you call or um, register online for pickup, they do take some small household items. So some of these things that are pictured here may be able to be picked up by some nonprofits who pick up textiles curbside. Yeah. Great. Right. And these chairs, for example, look in great condition. It would be great to donate to a Beverly Bootstraps or a Savers. And then there's also, um, kind of off the beaten path, a Facebook groups that are sort of associated with the Buy Nothing movement. And I know Nancy uh, has a presence on, on the Facebook group for Beverly, for Curb Alerts at least, where if you don't want an item, but you know someone else could find use for it, you can just post on that Facebook page and people will come pick it up from the porch or from the curb. Moving on to composting, so the Waste Reduction Committee started and launched the um, first pilot for uh, curbside compost pickup back in, was it 2015 or so? And now that number has grown, so we have about 10% of the households in Beverly, a little bit less, participating in a curbside compost pickup program. Um, we have really good pricing in Beverly, uh, where a full year, uh, at least through one of the three vendors that serves Beverly, can be as low as $92 a year. On top of that, the city offers three incentives for residents, a $20 discount on the annual trash bill, that's about $5 per quarter, and a free compost cart, which is $28 typically, that now can be picked up at Unpacked Living, the zero waste store on Cabot Street, and a free countertop bin. We have about 60 of those left, so you should sign up now if you can. And if you'd rather not have this curbside cart rollout model, then you can go with a different vendor, City Compost and Bootstrap Compost will service the Beverly area. And this new program we're very excited about is a community compost drop-off bin. This will be free and available to all residents of Beverly and will be located at the parking lot to Bessie Baker Park. Um, it was supposed to be set up this week, so we're hoping that by early next week, we'll be able to send up combination code before um, folks start accessing and, and dropping off their food scraps um, to the bin. So just some more information on this. Um, we call it a station, but what it really is, is just one bin to start. It's a 64 gallon bin. It's gonna be locked with a combination code and then secured to a fence. Uh, it'll be picked up twice a week by Black Earth Com Compost and uh, we really want this pilot to work. So if you're interested in, in 
um, participating in a composting program, but either the $92 a year is too high, or if you live in an apartment building downtown and don't have any way to um, access uh, composting, you can't uh, pull out a compost bin to the curb, then this is a really good option for you. If this is successful, one thing that we'd like to do is start soliciting um, other locations where you think this bin could be a success around town. Um, you do have to, in order to get access to the bin, fill out a knowledge quiz. So, you know, what can you put in this bin? Can you put in dog waste? No, you cannot. So there's some rights and wrong answers here. Uh, this spoiler alert uh, include the screenshot here has all of the right answers. So you can cheat a little bit. And then yard waste composting uh, is still available. This has been um, available to, to Beverly residents for a long time. Um, now the hours are extended to, and the, the days are extended from Monday through Saturday, 8 to 3.30 p.m. And we talk a lot about recycling and about composting, but really what we'd want for everybody to do first is think about whether an item is even necessary in the first place. Where possible, please prioritize and consider reducing what you buy and reducing the amount of packaging, the containers, the online shopping, um, buy local if you can. We have a few stores in Beverly that have refill stations. Um, this screenshot here is taken from Unpacked Living. They have household cleaners, personal care products, et cetera, olive oils. I think a new leaf has cooking oil, spices, teas, et cetera. And then you must have all seen some whole foods, pantry items that you can buy in bulk as well. And then I wanted to also highlight another great underutilized resource in Beverly, which is the Library of Things. The library offers um, to anybody that has a library card, you can check out for free a bunch of items. So this is a list on the left of their top items of the last year. And I know they just got 20 iPads that are available for uh, checkout. And then finally, to conclude, uh, a couple more resources. There's a lot of information on our city trash and recycling page that's run by our engineering department. And I took a screenshot of, of questions you can't necessarily see from this size, but these are the FAQs that they get all the time. And they're fielding calls from residents about, you know, what can go in the bin? Can I put out more than one recycling bin? Is there a limit to my trash, et cetera? You can find all the answers on the website. And then um, I follow on social media at Recycle Smart MA and would recommend that for anyone else because they um, are better at creating memes than we are in the city. And it's a lot of fun. It's a fun way to um, absorb content about waste reduction and feel part of the community for it. And then finally, I want to highlight a fun event, a community event that's taking place on November 7th. It's called the Great Pumpkin Smash and is organized by our local nonprofit group called Green Beverly. Uh, they're planning for anyone to show up with an old jack-o'-lantern. We're going to have some collections at the schools to um, bring painted, decorated uh, gourds to new entry farm the Sunday after Halloween. And I hear there's going to be a trebuchet. There's going to be a dart with a spike board that you see here. And once you're done destroying your pumpkin, all of this gets composted instead of um, incinerated as trash. So I think I can end it here and see if there are any questions. Um, Sue, Gail, feel free, Nancy, feel free to unmute if you have anything else you'd like to add. I see a question from Ben here. Would Black Earth take back a Beverly green bin that needs repair? Counted in the trash. Sue, so that I'm going to hand that to you. Um, I don't know what kind of repair the bin needs. I do not think they will take it back and repair it. They do sell uh, replacement latches that you can buy, and it's I think it's only a dollar, um, and they'll send you a brand new latch. And I believe they also provide replacement covers, uh, but I do not think that they take bins back and make the repairs themselves. That's my understanding. Sounds reasonable. And I see Heather, your hand is raised. Feel free to unmute and or show your video if you're comfortable. 
short. Hi, it's Heather Woolsey at Beverly Main Streets. Um, really glad to learn all this information. I was wondering, um, will, when will this be available? Um, what's the best link? You know, if I share this information, is there one link to this presentation or what's the best way to share these resources with everyone? Good question. Um, this presentation I can upload to the, I think the trash and recycling page would be the most um, central location for people to access resources. So this is your, oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore, excuse me. <laughs> I'll add it to the chat, but it's beverlyma.gov slash 208 trash recycling. I'm gonna add that to the chat. Great, thank you so much. And we will upload a recording of this to BevCam as well. Irina, there's a question about enforcing mandatory recycling. And I guess I, I'd like to just ask that in a different way. Is the, the city had started and our committee was involved in part with that in looking at an all hauler ordinance that would require any hauler who serves the city of Beverly for waste collection would have to also offer recycling collection as a way to um, ensure that people who live in apartment buildings and condo complexes and maybe even housing authority buildings, places that may not have access to composting, um, recycling would actually get that access. Is um, the city still considering moving forward with exploring an ordinance like that to strengthen recycling citywide? We are, and I actually just asked Gail about this earlier today. Um, yes, we are. And we are going to have more um, compli uh, compliance and enforcement um, capacity soon coming from our engineering department. So I think we're going to roll that out once we have someone that's going to be able to kind of um, be boots on the ground and go to those facilities, those buildings that might not be offering recycling to do that outreach to them. And in the interim, kind of in the short term, we started to compile a list of buildings that um, we know and suspect and have heard from tenants do not offer recycling. So maybe they just have a couple of dumpsters out front, maybe their trash room just has, you know, a couple of trash bins and no recycling, let alone composting. And um, once we get us, you know, once that is confirmed, we can work with Gail and with MassDEP to send a letter of non-compliance just to say, hey, just so you know, there are materials that are on this banned list, like that cardboard, like that glass that you need to be removing from the trash stream. So typically that is done by offering a separated stream for recycling. So that in the short term is, you know, feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to someone from our engineering department to give information about a building if you're aware of it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, and in the absence of any additional questions, if there's anything Gail, that you want to add from the state that we should be aware of or see anything else from your, your other... One thing um, I, yeah. I would just like to say um, on behalf of the Waste Reduction Committee, um, we have been pushing for a lot of changes for a while, things that will advance us towards a more sustainable Beverly. And um, the Resilient Together plan has some fantastic goals and um, objectives in it, really aligned with tough goals that the state has set. And we are very excited to see many of these initiatives begin to surface and come to light. Um, the drop-off curbside composting bin, the effort to encourage um, the um, apartment buildings and condo complexes to recycle, uh, the look, stronger look at enforcement, the increased access to uh, Stanley Street for yard waste composting. Those are all just fantastic initiatives to give people more tools and resources to do the right thing. Uh, many people want to do the right thing. They just don't always have the access to it. So it's fantastic. Um, there's a lot more we'd like to see done, but we are just very excited that we're on the right path and making some some great changes. So thank you to you, Arena, and to what you're doing and what the city is is working on doing. We appreciate it very much and are very excited to be on this path with you guys together. Wouldn't you agree, Nancy? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for all your hard work. We appreciate it too. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to partner with you. Yeah, and, and, in and the DEP. Very <laughs> lucky. Yeah, very lucky to have this volunteer waste reduction committee that's doing this, you know, unpaid out of the goodness of their hearts to help the city advance a lot of these programs. 
Um, and with Gail, even though she's a regional resource, she is kind of housed and her home base is in Beverly. So we're lucky for as well. Okay, with that, I saw Ben, you had shown your video. I don't know if you wanted to add anything. Just I have anything. kind of question, commenty things, but they're not like if people want to, are ready to leave and want to leave, they'd no reason they need to stay at this point. Um, I don't know. Is this week is a yard waste pickup week, right? You happen to know? I think I checked. Um, I will need to pull up the calendar. Which well, I just figured you know, it looks like JRM is at least two days behind on that. Um, and I don't know how much you guys know about this. And I, don't, I don't think it's, it's not, not public, but it's not like hit the news yet. I believe JRM is selling. Um, I heard that Republic is buying JRM. Yeah, so we've started to hear some rumors. Nothing has been confirmed. But what I do know is that the contract that we have in place with JRM just gets transferred over to whoever would have um, have purchased that. Yeah, I just, it's an interesting update. And what I heard from the same place I heard that is that it is going hand in hand with a decrease in the quality of service from JRM currently. They're struggling and... It's, I think everyone, Ben, I think everyone is struggling right oh, now. I mean, struggling the, right the supply now. chains and everything. Yeah. And um, I, it's the, the yard that. waste. The yard waste is is regrettable if they're a few days behind. Um, but they have been very consistent with the, both the trash and the recycling pickup, um, which personally, I think is far more important to, in, in terms oh, of oh. <laughs> trash piling up. <laughs> um, and, and again, you know. they've been behind on the recycling. And that's because the company didn't give them enough. Uh, they only gave them one truck when Beverly typically has two. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's, a, I think it's a matter of possibly a matter of staffing and everything as well. Um, uh, COVID has, has, yeah. has decimated everyone's uh, you know, uh, um, employment roles and supply chains and everything else. So, um, so I think, I think patients all around, um, not just with JRM, but with, you know, all the services these days, uh, has to be the mantra for, for a while at least, but th thank you for bringing that to our attention. Yeah. I just, it's, I haven't seen any official announcement of it yet, but I've heard that it's official unofficially. Um, so, well, we'll wait and see, and we'll communicate anything that we do. Yeah, here. I just it'll be interesting to see how that. I mean, I obviously we would get the same service, but like it'll be interesting to see how that changes things. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it would change some stuff. And I think, um, you know, in the in the industry, it's very common for um, a lot a lot of the larger companies to buy out smaller companies. And I heard the same rumor. And it, just like you, I have no confirmation of anything, but I've heard the same talk on the street. And um, we'll just see, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, sometimes change is problematic and sometimes it can be fantastic. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it creates new resources and um, yeah. the ability to fix problems. And so we're just, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, let us know if you get anything confirmed. <laughs> Will do. Um, yeah, I've been keeping an eye on Waste Dive for the past week or so, looking out to see if they'll have an article, because I think that's where I'll probably see it first, is they would probably find out about it right away. I don't know if either of you guys are subscribed to Waste Dive. I do. No, but it sounds like I should. Another resource to add the list. Yeah. I can send you the subscription link if you want. Uh, or you can just Google Waste Dive and subscribe to it. I don't know where I found it, but um, yeah. Okay. Really should do, do drop off bulky rigids. I know I've said this many other times, but uh, we should try to get JRM to, JRM takes bulky, drop off bulky rigids. This might be new. I don't know if I've mentioned this at a waste reduction meeting. JRM does in Danvers, they have a drop off 30 yard container where Danvers residents can drop off bulky rigid plastics. Yeah, Danvers got that through a grant through MassDEP several years ago. Okay. So is it hard for them to actually expand that elsewhere? Uh, there's no longer a grant okay. through the state for it. But. So is and, that uh, my, under 
My understanding is the cost to recycle bulky rigid plastics is at least as much as the cost to dispose of them. So uh, doesn't mean that it's not the right thing to do, uh, but it's the, I think that to me, it signals that the market is very weak. There is no it. market for bulky rigid, it's pretty much. Yeah. Just but hopefully we'll get there. I generate I mean, a lot of bulky rigids. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to a point where um, markets markets have been improving, and I'm sure you know this, Ben. You know, certain like the fibers, fiber materials, paper, mixed paper, and cardboard. The values have been going up a lot recently. Um, so hopefully, you know, we what we all need to do as a community and you know locally and regionally and on a state and national level is we really need to all work together for this circular economy. We need to um, recycle our materials, but then we need to buy recycled so that we close the loop. And we need to, as Zarina said, think about what we're buying and only buy what we really need, you know, reduce that consumption where we can. And when we do buy, we need to buy things that are durable and have a long life and are recyclable in the end. So, but that's a, that's a big change and it, it's not a something you can just do tomorrow. It's a something that takes a lot of people doing things consistently over a, a long period of time. But uh, I think we just all keep working towards it. My theory is if you give it long enough, you can find anything, literally anything you want in the trash. <laughs> unless you have set, unless your expectation is like a diamond ring and you don't work at like a transfer station. Because then the possibility. What I really wanted was a black earth bin that was missing a latch and wheels. So we really hit the jackpot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I mean, it's a matter of time. I have, I mean, I could furnish multiple apartments with the stuff I bring home. So I just had a whole huge free pile of working stuff in my driveway last week. That so that's good. You're the reuse king, you know. Yeah. Well, I bring it home. It's too good to it's too good to scrap. Share pictures of your treasures. I should post about them. I was I was thinking about like turning my video on and just staying muted while like processing scrap metal in the driveway and just for a laugh, but I didn't. That's the next video. Yeah. Okay. So with that, is there anyone else in the audience that has a question? I guess I think my other question is when is engineering posting that uh, compliance job? Oh, yes. Interesting. Um, it's in HR. It's with HR right now. It's going to be a okay. compliance officer position that covers um, both waste reduction, kind of recycling compliance, as well as a lot of other types of engineering compliance, including some stormwater stuff. So mm -hmm. I can let you know then. Yeah, I'm probably won't be out of school by the time they get it posted, but that's something I've been keeping an eye out for. Okay. Okay, well, thank you all for joining tonight. Um, thank you, Gail, Sue, Nancy, Ben, for weighing in. I know you're all experts in different ways. So together, I hope we've given kind of a good picture for you of how to improve our practices kind of as a community. So thanks so much, really appreciate it.